Okay, so here is the practice test review for the unit on motion, unit two. What is the definition of the rate of change of position and direction from one place to another? That is known as velocity. Okay, velocity is the rate of change in position and direction. If it was just position, that would be speed. But when you add direction, that is what is known as velocity. The measure of how far an object has moved is called the distance. Right? If you add time, distance over time, then that would be speed. So the measure of how far it's moved is what we refer to as the distance it's moved. What speed and velocity have in common is that they both indicate uh, the rate of distance and time. So they both have something like meters per second or miles per hour. The difference being speed just has the number associated with it, and velocity has both the number and a direction involved. So when you graph the speed of a moving object, so distance over time, the slope tells you something about the speed. So a greater slope would indicate a uh, faster motion. A smaller slope indicates a slower rate of speed because it's moving less distance over the same amount of time, so it's moving more slowly. On a speed graph, the object is getting farther away. Well, if the early distances are smaller than the later distances, so the distance at time zero is less than the distance at time, say, 10 seconds, that means the object has gotten farther away from you. Okay, if the distances are getting smaller, that implies that the object is getting closer to you. So the distance is getting, no, sorry, the distance is getting, right, the distance is getting smaller as it gets, as time goes on, means that it's getting closer. But early distances smaller than later distances mean it's getting farther away. The axes of a speed graph should be set up so that the vertical axis is distance and the horizontal axis is your time. So uh, distance goes up and down, time goes left to right. Which of the following is an SI measure of speed? Well, you have to remember what the SI units are. Any combination of um, a measure of distance that is related to meters divided by any measure of time could be considered an SI measure of speed. The only one of these that would fall into the SI measures is meters per second because all of the other measurements, miles, feet, yards, furlongs, those are not related to meters and therefore they wouldn't be considered SI measures. What do we um, see when we look at a speed graph? Well, literally the speed graph shows you distance on one axis and time on the other, which we just talked about a couple questions ago. So the graph shows you the change in distance over time. For each second or minute or hour on the graph, how much distance has the object moved? And therefore, what is the change in distance over a period of time? Okay, so we're talking about what's called the resultant vector, which basically means adding up all of the um, vectors in a sequence. And in this case, what you can do is simply consider one direction positive and the other direction negative. And then if you add them all up, the negative and positive will cancel each other out to some extent, and you'll end up with a, a number at the end, which tells you the overall resultant vector. So in this case, just to give you an idea, so we're pointing to the right, and that has a magnitude of 7. So if we make moving to the right positive, that means moving to the left would be negative. And then when you add those two together, you end up with negative 5. But the positive and negative part is totally arbitrary. What really matters is what's the overall um, movement. The overall movement is five units to the left. Okay, since it's only negative because we chose negative being left. We could have switched that around and made right negative and left positive. That doesn't matter. But what you're looking for is what is the total distance when you add it all up and which direction does it end up going. Okay, what is the speed of a snail in centimeters per second 
if it travels 17 meters in 43 minutes. So there's a couple of pieces to this. First of all, you're starting out in meters per minute. You want your answer to be in centimeters per second. So first, actually it doesn't matter which order you do this in, but I'm going to choose to start by converting meters to centimeters. So one meter is the same as 100 centimeters. And then the second step that I have to convert is minutes into seconds. One minute equals 60 seconds. So I had to set this up this way for two reasons. One, in order to cancel out the minutes, I have to have it on the top and the bottom. So since it started on the top, I had to put it on the bottom of the second one. And since I want to cancel minutes, minutes started on the bottom, which means minutes goes on the top over here. And what that leaves us with is centimeters over seconds once I do all this mathematics. So what I do now is multiply 17.2 times 100 and then, oops, forgot to put in the, the actual number of minutes, uh, 43.8. So across the top it's going to be 17.2 times 100, across the bottom it's 43.8 times 60, and then I'm going to divide those two numbers out and the units will be centimeters and seconds. What you find when you do that math is 0.65 centimeters per second. That's actually a pretty pretty fast snail. Okay, so now we have five vectors. So this is going back to um, a couple questions ago. We had a similar one which was just two vectors, uh, one left and one right. Now we're adding in the dimension of up and down and we have an odd number of vectors. That doesn't really matter. We're going to do the same basic process, but now we have to track up and down as well as left and right. So first we have, and these are not going to be to scale, okay, first we have movement to the left of 14, then we have movement up of 4, so I'm making, oops, it's uh, movement to the left of 14, so I'm just, because it came first I'm making that positive, it doesn't matter. The second point's up, I'm going to make up positive, the third point's to the right with a magnitude of 11, so that's going to be negative 11 since we started with left being positive. Then we have one pointing down with a magnitude of 6. So that's going to be negative 6 since up is positive, down is negative. And then lastly we have moving to the right with a magnitude of 3. So that's negative 3 since left is positive, right is negative. Well when we add these up, what happens is left is 14 and the total of the two right vectors is 14. So that means there's zero change left to right. And then over here we have up 4 and down 6, which means the overall resultant is 2 down. Okay, and if we really did it out, it would be negative 2, but again, the negative positive thing is, is just something we did to keep it separate. So the total answer is 2 down. Okay, so what do you get if you calculate... Uh, by dividing the total distance traveled in a certain direction by the amount of time it takes to go that direction or that distance, that would be the velocity. Right? Anytime you're talking about distance traveled in a direction over time, that's velocity. Just distance over time without direction would be speed. Okay, so here are these um, charts which it didn't show up very well on here, so I just redrew them. Uh, so for the first question, which graphs show changing speed? There was a typo. Uh, option D should have said 1, 2, and 5. But the key here is anytime there's a curved line, it shows something that's changing speed. So even in my drawing, chart 4 looks like it's curved. It should be straight. So 1, 2, and 5 were the straight, uh, were the curved lines, rather. And then um, an object moving away from you would be charts 2 and 4. Anytime the distance, we're assuming you are the reference point, so from your point of view, if it goes up to the right, that means the distance is getting greater up and to the right, so that would be charts 2 and 4. So um, I'm not going to redraw the charts, but um, something that starts out quickly and then slows down would be chart 5, because it starts out at sort of a steeper slope and then levels off a little bit toward the, down and to the right. And then which uh, charts show an object at a constant speed? This one was a little bit tricky, maybe. Uh, but anytime there's a straight line, it's a constant speed, even if the speed is zero, right? Because if you're sitting still, your speed is constant at zero. So chart three 
is constant speed of zero because the distance isn't changing, and chart four is a straight line up and to the right, which means it's um, a constant speed away from you. Okay, and finally, which uh, show charts uh, a car sitting at a red light? That would be chart three, one that's not moving. And which one shows a ball being dropped from a roof? Again, in this case, we're assuming that you're the one dropping the ball on the roof, so your vantage point is the your reference point is the roof. So chart two shows an object starting at zero distance and zero speed over time, and then it accelerates. That's the up curve up to the right. That means it's getting farther away from you and it's getting faster. So that indicates a ball accelerating with the force of gravity away from you if you're standing on the roof. Which of the following is a requirement for a good graph? Well, in order to have a good graph, one of the things you have to have is the axes labeled um, with the unit and what it is you're measuring. Are you measuring speed, distance, time, uh, and in what units are you measuring it? Seconds, meters, etc. So make sure you're labeled so that we know what we're looking at when we look at the chart. Okay, how far will Jacob run in 6.3 seconds if his speed is 3.8 meters per second? Well, if he's running 3.8 meters per second, and his time is 6.3 seconds, so he's going that fast for that long, you would multiply 6.3 seconds times 3.8 meters per second, and you would get an answer of 23.9 meters, basically 24 meters, which, if you look at it, kind of makes sense. It's a little over six seconds for a little over six seconds at about four meters per second, so that's about 24 meters. Running 235.4 meters in 45 seconds, what is your speed? Well, speed is distance divided by time. 45 seconds. And this is in kilometers per hour. So we can get the speed per second, right? And then we'd have to multiply the meters, or actually divide, rather, because one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And if we're doing hours, we'd have to multiply. Uh, so one hour is 3,600 seconds. Because right, 60 seconds per minute times 60 minutes per hour is 3,600. So we'd multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then divide. And we'd find out that your rate is 18.8 .8 kilometers per hour. And that, that was a typo that should have just said 45 seconds. Um, so it's not one minute, 45 seconds, it's just 45 seconds. If you got a different answer, um, it's probably because you actually read the question and, and I made a typo there. Sorry about that. Uh, which of these is not a scalar quantity? A scalar quantity is one that does not include a direction. And all of these, or none of these include a direction except velocity. So that would be the one that's not scalar. That is a vector quantity. Okay, here is a, uh, another distance and time. So... Speed is distance over time. This is 202 meters, and it takes 5 seconds. So we literally just divide the 202 by 5, and we get 40 meters, 40.4 meters per second. Uh, any quantity that is including a direction is called a vector. And it's the opposite of the one we had a couple minutes ago with the uh, scalar. What is the difference between scalar and vector quantities? Well, we kind of just went over that in the last couple of questions. Right? A scalar quantity is just a number, whereas a vector quantity is a number with a direction component as well. So uh, scalar is irrelevant to direction, and vector quantities have a direction component as well as a number. Okay, here is another speed question, except this time we've got the speed and we've got the time, we want to know how far the ball traveled in that time. So since speed, 84.8 meters per second, equals distance over time, and the time is 0.62 seconds, well then what we would do is we would multiply both sides by 0.62. And then we would find that the distance equals 52.6 meters. When you multiply 84.8 by 0.62, that's what you get. That's uh, pretty far to hit 
a volleyball, uh, but that's the way the numbers work out. All right, finally, um, a stick moving through a photo gate. Okay, uh, a photo gate works by um, having a beam of light, and when something passes through it, the timer starts as soon as the light beam is broken, and then it stops as soon as the light beam starts over. So the thickness of the object passing through the photo gate is the distance, right? Because it travels through the beam of light in a certain amount of time, and then you can use the, the width of the object to figure out, well, how far did it go and how long was the beam broken? So the distance is the width, or in this case, diameter um, of the object. Okay, so speed equals distance over time, right? So um, speed equals, uh, sorry, we're trying to calculate speed here. We're trying to calculate um, the, the distance. So here we go. So we've got the speed is 13.85 meters per second. And that equals whatever the distance is divided by 0 0.00136 seconds. There we go. And when we do this, we get an answer of 0 0.018 meters. But the uh, question says, what's the diameter in centimeters? So we have to convert that. We say 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. So 100 times 0 0.018 gives you an answer of 1.8 centimeters. So the width or the diameter of the um, stick is 1.8 centimeters. That's the distance that it traveled in that uh, 0.0013 seconds. So there you go. Um, the answer key for the other review packet that you got a couple days before will be posted as a PDF on the website uh, in this same section. So that's it. The, uh, please bring a calculator. You will need and want a calculator, and there aren't uh, really spare calculators in the room. So bring a calculator. You can't use your phone. Uh, a simple calculator should be fine. You don't need anything fancy. Just uh, four-function calculators should do it for now. All right, there you go. We'll see you on Monday.